Hi, my name is Carrie Goulder from Kid Giddy, and I'm here today to show you how to make the tufted bird with the little egg. These are the supplies that you'll need to get started. You'll need some fabric for your bird. I prefer to use two different patterns, and then you'll need a little bit of fabric for the egg. You'll need some embroidery floss and a doll needle for the eyes. You'll need a turning fork and the stick that goes with it, as well as a stuffing fork. You'll need some clipping shears and some stuffing. So we'll be using the tufted bird and egg die, and this die can go on all the Sizzix machines. When you're laying your fabric out, it's really important to make sure that your stretch is in the correct direction. So for the top of the body, you'll need your stretch to go sideways. So you want to lay that down right on top. So for the belly part of the bird, you'll want to make sure that the stretch goes lengthwise. So the pieces are going to be opposite. I have a little bit of extra fabric on here, so I'm going to cut some of that off. You can put it underneath, but you don't want to put too many layers underneath your die. We'll cut out the little egg piece later. With all the pieces covering it, you don't want to cut it in the wrong spot and then waste your fabric. So right now we'll make our Sizzix sandwich. One cutting pad on top, one on bottom, and we'll run it right through the machine. So now that we have our pieces cut, We'll take them out. If you have a little tiny thread that's still attached, just go ahead and clip it with scissors. We're going to take the two top pieces or the sides of the bird and we're going to sew from the tail to about mid body and we're going to start and stop with a locking stitch. So you can reverse back and forth or you can use an actual locking stitch on your machine. You're going to leave about an inch space. You're going to continue all the way up to the point and you're going to come down all the way right in between the center of the nose. This is really important so that you have the exact amount of seam allowance that you need to connect the belly. This is also the time when you can decide if you want to make this an ornament, if you want to hang it, you want to put your piece of ribbon or whatever you're going to use to hang it, you want to put that in right before you sew this part up. You want to use a quarter inch seam allowance or you can use a scant quarter inch seam allowance and have your bird be a little bit bigger. It's totally up to you. To go around up to the top, you're just going to curve your fabric a little and pivot when you need to. Pivot the bird all the way so that you can do the front forehead. And then again, you'll pivot right in between the center of the nose. So here you see I have a little bit of an opening. And then I also have the, the peak of the top of the bird. And then I go down to the center. So now I'm going to put these two body pieces of the bird right down on top of the belly piece, which is right side up. I'm going to line up my center the two nose pieces and I'm going to I'm going to move this little seam allowance over to the side so it doesn't get caught in the way. And I'm going to sew from the center of the nose all the way around to the edge. If you want to pin this in place, you totally can. I've been making these for quite a while, so I feel comfortable just moving the fabric together as I go along. Here I am, I'm just going to match up my top piece with my bottom piece as I keep going. You'll want to go down all the way to the end of the tail. Every few stitches I'll stop and I'll line them up again. You may have to pull the top piece a little bit to the side or push it to the other side. But I promise they line up. So I'm just going to keep pushing my fabric wherever I have a curve. I just like to push the fabric or let it sway to one side or the other to go right along down that curve. Line up the end piece. Now I'm going to swing it back the other way. And lock in my stitch. So now that you've got the belly piece attached on one side, we've gone from the top of the beak all the way down to the tail. It's important to stay going from the top all the way down to the bottom. 
The reason for that is you don't want the pieces shifting and twisting by going down one side and up the other. So go ahead and sew the other side of your bird together. So now that we have our bird pieces put together, we want to finish two seams. That's the end of the tail and the top of the beak. So flatten out your seams, just open them up and stitch a quarter inch straight across the tail. Now that we've sewn the end of the tail, we want to sew the beak. And again, you want to make sure that you flatten out your seams. This will make it really nice when you go to turn it and stuff it. So now we've finished sewing this part of the bird. And what we're going to do is we're going to clip and notch our edges. I like to clip off all of my corners. This reduces some of the weird bulk that you might get. And it allows the corners to be pushed out all the way to a perfect corner. So I clip off my little top from the tuft. I like to clip off both little corners of the beak. And now I'm going to clip and notch around the curves. And inside curves is just a simple little clipping, just straight. And when you get to an outside curve, you actually need to notch it. You're creating a little tiny triangle. This allows the fabric to gently be stretched. So I like to just go all the way around in one direction and then I go back and do the other direction. You don't need to clip or notch your straight edges, you just need to do the curves. Once you finish clipping and notching your bird, you just want to turn it inside out using your turning tubes and you turn it right side out. Now we're going to poke our little corners very gently. You want to make sure not to poke them too hard because otherwise you will poke a hole right through the fabric. Gently poke out the face and get the little top. I just like to run the stick right along the seam, push the top out and push the beak out. For the beak you might need to use the metal turning tube stick and just gently push it out. Again you want to make sure not to poke a hole in it. So now I'm going to go ahead and stuff it. I like to use the stuffing fork and you just take little pieces and you stuff it right in there. It's not all going to go in at once. You just keep grabbing it with the stuffing fork and you just keep pushing it in. And when that piece is gone, you grab some more. Another trick I want to show you, when you're stuffing you can take a very small piece of polyfill and your stuffing fork and hold it in your hands really tight and twist your stuffing fork. This gives you almost a Q-tip effect. And then you can just stick that right in the top of the bird, either in the beak or in the top part of the tuft. When you're done stuffing your bird, you can stitch the top of your bird with a little ladder stitch. Just go zigzagging across. And you can also flatten out the tail if you want. And to do that, you just want to put it through the machine. You want to make sure that your tail isn't too stuffed. I might have overstuffed mine just a tad but I really like to have a stuffed tail. So I go up from the bottom of the tail. I turn it a little bit. You want to make sure that you keep your needle down. Go across the seam, turn the bird again, and now you're just going to come right back down to the bottom of the tail. So you can see here that the little stitching allows the tail to be a little bit flatter. You don't have to do this part, that's totally optional, but I really like the effect that it provides. Then you want to put some eyes in with some embroidery floss. You can either do French knots, you can do little tiny beads, that's totally up to you. If it's going to be for a little child, you want to make sure to use embroidery floss, it's a lot safer. So I want to show you a couple of different things that you can do with your tufted bird dye. First of all, I had mentioned earlier that if you use a scant quarter inch seam allowance, your bird would be a little bit bigger. So this is here to show you the size difference in the birds. You can see one is a little bit longer and one's a little bit bigger. So your seam allowance will definitely make a difference. I also wanted to show you that you can still somewhat fussy cut the top of your bird and even the belly piece. The top of the bird, is if you have a piece of fabric that has a symmetrical design like this one, you want to find that center line and fold it right on that edge. 
When you put it on your die, you want to make sure that your edge is very, very close to the edge of the bird's back. By doing this, it will give you this effect. Now, mine's obviously not exact, and it may not be exact, but it's going to come really close. So this way, you get the symmetrical design effect, and then your face and the top of your bird will be very similar. So that's always fun to do. You can also cut out different fabrics. You can use wool felt. You can make ornaments for Christmas. You can embroider them. You can do whatever you want. Now we're going to cut out the pieces for the egg. It's really important to have your stretch go top to bottom for the egg pieces. So right here, our fabric isn't stretchy, but this way it is. So when we place it down on the die, we want to make sure that the stretch goes lengthwise. You'll need six pieces. So I'm folding my piece in threes, and I'm just going to fold it right over. You can do up to eight pieces on your die cuts. I'm going to line up my fabric from top to bottom of the egg panel, and I'm just going to cut that out. Now that we have six panel pieces for our egg, we're going to take two pieces, right sides together, and we're going to sew from the very center of the top all the way around to the very center of the bottom. If you don't go directly into the center points, you'll have a hole at the top of your egg or you'll have a hole at the bottom or both. So you wanna make sure that you go straight all the way to the center. You also wanna make sure to lock in your stitches at the beginning and the end of your seam allowance. I am using a quarter inch seam allowance This is not somewhere where you can do a scant quarter inch, otherwise you will have the holes at the top or the bottom. Now I've got two pieces put together, and I'm going to take another piece right side down, and I'm going to line up the edge of the panel, and I'm going to sew, again, from the center of the top all the way to the center of the bottom. Just follow the curve and keep going. I have three panel pieces put together, and now you want to make three more. So sew three panels together again, so you have two exact same sides. Now I've got my two sides of the egg, and we're going to put them together. So on one side, we're going to sew all the way from the center, around the edge, all the way to the bottom. And on the other side, we're going to sew from the top, just about to the middle, leave about a half an inch, and then we're going to sew the bottom. Each time, again, you want to make sure you lock in your stitches, otherwise it'll come undone as you're turning it and stuffing it. Here we have all of our egg panels put together. Now we want to notch all of the edges of the egg. As you're notching the egg, you want to make sure that you do these little triangles, just as we did on the bird. And you're going to do each little panel piece. You want to make sure to hold back all the other panels so that you don't accidentally cut them. Go ahead and keep finishing and then you can turn your egg right side out. So here I have two eggs to show you. One of them I did right and one of them I did wrong. This one here on my left hand is wrong. What I ended up doing was I cut the stretch in the wrong direction. I actually cut the panels so they stretched from side to side. This is what's going to happen to your egg if you cut your stretch from side to side as well. This egg is actually correct. So the stretch went from top to bottom the way it should be. So if you have an egg that looks like this, go ahead and recut it in, with the correct stretch and sew it up again and you'll have a perfect little egg. Once you're finished, all you have to do is take a little ladder stitch and sew it right up and your egg is all done. Once you finish your eggs, you can decide how many eggs and how many birds you want to make. And I hope you make a ton of birds and eggs and make a huge flock and I hope you have fun.